I'm finally free. I dance amidst the boxes and furniture strewn all over my new apartment, free of my parents, free of my annoying siblings, free of the shitty little neighborhood I lived in, free of my mother's hoarding, free of my past, of the pathetic, hopeless girl that I used to be. Welcome to your new life, Willow Stroop, I tell myself as I take a flying leap onto my bed. The box springs creaks in defiance, and the putrid smells of mold and rotten food and dust from my previous living conditions waft up in an invisible cloud to attack my nostrils. I cringe away from it. I'm going to have to air you out, I say to the mattress. I'm going to have to air all of you out. My gaze encompasses the boxes in the room. Hopefully a few dozen candles will get rid of the stench of my previous life. The new paint smell in my apartment certainly helps. I hug myself. A huge smile plastered across my face as I roll around and bounce with excitement. I can't remember the last time I was this happy. It must have been ages ago before I knew how cruel the world can be. Before I realized that my childhood wasn't normal. That I wasn't normal. All of that is behind me now. I don't want to think about it anymore. That's why I moved here. To start over as if none of that ever existed. No one here knows the Willow Stroop who grew up in Marfa, Texas. San Antonio is such a big city that the odds of running into someone from my past are one in a million. People here are going to be able to see me for who I am, not who I was. Just thinking about the possibilities of new friendships, and most of all, new love interests, makes my chest feel like it's filled with bubbles. I'm so damned excited. Oh my God, everything is so flippin' perfect. Life is amazing and wonderful and I just can't contain myself. I let the happiness flow through me, a feeling that I'm not very accustomed to. Perhaps that's why it's so intense. My body is tingling from the overload of pleasant emotions. I practically launch myself off my bed to unpack my essentials. Then I start on the less than essentials. As I'm putting up my pots and pans, I get the brilliant idea to bake cookies for my neighbors. I know that it's an old tradition that has pretty much died out. And in the past, people would cook for the new person in the neighborhood. But I want to be on good terms with all of my neighbors. Even if we do live in an apartment complex, we'll have to see each other eventually. And besides, I really want to get started on making friends. I've seen so many shows where neighbors and apartments become friends. I want that. I want my life to be perfect, just like all of the TV shows and movies that I watched when I was younger. I run to the local Dollar General and pick up only what I need to make cookies. I'll do my major grocery shopping tomorrow. It will be a lot cheaper to go to one of the big grocery stores where I can use all of the coupons I've been clipping. But tonight, I don't really have the energy to walk down long aisles and wade through a sea of people. Not enough energy to do that, but enough energy to make cookies, I think to myself with a half-cocked grin. I'm still a little strange, I suppose. My priorities are all screwed up, but I'm just going to go with it for tonight. I return to my apartment and whip up a quick batch of homemade chocolate chip cookies. It's my mom's recipe, which means there is tons of butter and sugar. Hopefully, they're not too rich for my neighbors. Of course, I won't touch them. I'm on an incredibly strict diet, and I've already reached my calorie limit for the day. Besides, I purposefully made my mom's recipe so that I wouldn't be tempted. I remember what eating those cookies did to me in the past, and I will not go there again. While I wait for the cookies to bake and cool, I unpack a few more boxes. There really isn't that much stuff. I took the bare minimum because I planned to slowly replace everything. I couldn't leave home without the basics, though, only because I can't afford to replace everything at once. Eventually, there will be no trace of who I was or where I came from. All of these things that I brought with me will be donated to charity, and I won't have any more nasty reminders around of my previous life. My mood dips slightly as I think about how hard I'm trying to escape. It makes sense, though. Anyone who came from the same background would do the exact same thing. Or maybe they wouldn't. My siblings seem content to stay at home and continue in squalor and filth and unhealthy habits. That's not me, though. That will never be me again. I place a dozen cookies on a paper plate with a plastic plate holder beneath, frowning at how cheap it looks. Then my frown deepens at the realization that I might not get the placeholder back. I should have bought some thick, durable paper plates while I was at the Dollar General, but I wasn't thinking that far ahead. The fact that I'm fretting over it is a testament to how cheap I am, to how poor I am. Hopefully, it won't be this way for long.